Welcome back. We are continuing our chat on all things Surface with Chris Plumridge and Pete Lewis from the Surface Engineering crew. Uh, and we wanted to talk a little bit about Windows 10 going end of life and having to upgrade to Windows 11. So obviously this year, I think it's in October, Windows 10 is... October 14 is, is end of support. Yep. the last days of Windows 10. Um, Windows 10 has been around for a long time now, but we know that there's still a lot of customers, our customers who are still running Windows 10 in their environment. 2015, I think that we found it was the... October. Uh, yeah, that was the release date yeah. for Windows 10. So that will be 10 years old by the time. The it's full end decade. Of it is a, a decade. It's a, a decade. Good, good way of putting it. Um, and when you think back to what we were doing 10 years ago, the story was very different, right? The, even the thinking, we were on probably about, I think Surface Pro 4, was around the time when um, that was the Surface that came out with Windows 10 on it. And we were using Windows 8 before that. I think we had Windows Hello coming out for sort of Pro 4 was the first device we had Windows Hello for. Windows Hello, right. right. So that, that was, was the first time we enabled that as a security yeah. authentication method. So And that feels like it's been a constant part of Surface. So it seems so long ago, I almost yeah. can't remember it. So, so things have changed a bit. Uh, 2021, I think, was when Windows 11 came out. We've had a few years to make this upgrade, but we're finding a lot of customers kind of holding back. So uh, why do you think that is? Um, what's in it for people? Why should they upgrade? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll, I'll give my lens on it. Um, I've been talking about you know the, the Windows 10 and support for a long time now. Um, but because I do speak to our customers a lot, I am you know on the ground talking to customers, and I've given this feedback to our, our corp team, especially since COVID. There's so much going on in our customers right now. There's so many things that IT gets gets thrown to do um, that it's just literally become a little bit of a resource thing, yeah. I think. Um, we just don't have the people and the time to be able to address It's the people, this. and people literally are being stretched so thin. They, yeah. They're wearing multiple hats to do different things in their business, and there's so much IT technology as a whole now goes across the whole business. I mean, one of the, the big banks in Australia, um, or most of the big banks now, actually class themselves as technology companies, not banks anymore. Yeah. That's what they, they see themselves as. So... I think for me, when I look at those big, large customers that I'm dealing with, whether it be government, commercial, even some of the bigger education institutions, it's literally just been a resource thing. Um, and you know, a lot of these these companies have legacy applications that take, you know, whilst we might say as Microsoft they're going to work, yep. you know, they do need to go through each of these applications make to sure make sure, sure that the they do work. Yep. And then subsequently, are they going to be supported by that ISV or software vendor yep. as well on Windows 11? So and there's it's a lot a of complexity. Of a legacy, right? Because yep. in the past, we did run into those issues far more often where applications wouldn't work from one version of Windows to another. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, from, from seven to 10 was a massive jump, right? And a lot of customers missed out on eight for various reasons. And so they needed to sort of go to that, that, that next sort of architecture and testing. Yep. Um, but I think for me, that's sort of um, the big ones. I don't think really there's a lot of technical blockers anymore. It's yep. really just going through the motions and going through the process to do it. I think it's just resources for me. Yep, what about you, Pete? It was an interesting point you said there around going from 7 to 10. And a lot of that mentality has been to skip a version. Yeah. And that hasn't been an option here because of the longevity of Windows 10. Yeah, 10 and, years. You yeah. know, uh, okay. and Windows 11 now, <laughs> that's turning 4 this year. So it's going to have, uh, you know, its lifespan. Yep. But we're seeing um, a lot of the functionality... Uh, and the features, et cetera, obviously not being added into Windows 10 anymore. Yeah. And Windows 11's the, the new code base, the new structure for, for everything that's, that's going forward. And, and from my perspective, I think that there's uh, a lot of focus on those resources in the technical aspects of this upgrade and compatibility and all that sort of stuff. Probably not enough on the user and the experience of the user. But certainly we were talking before about, you know, young people coming into the workforce and getting given an old you know, laptop from the bottom of the cupboard. It's not the experience that young people want to have coming to workforce, and rightly so. I wouldn't tolerate it. Um, so you know, perhaps also the software aspect of that needs to be considered as well, because I think there's really compelling reasons to upgrade from a, a personal you know, use perspective, a productivity perspective. Do you guys have any favorites about you know, things that are in Windows 11 that maybe weren't in Windows 10? Well, I've got a load of the back-end tech things that are yeah. requiring Windows 11, like Wi-Fi 7 and, and some of these things, but you've really touched on the productivity piece. Yeah. And I know if I 
or when I was working as an IT manager, getting those runs on the board yep. for productivity is a big plus to moving to one of these other platforms. Yep. So yeah, there is an investment in having to do it and, and move to the, to the next version. But a lot of customers are also using the Windows 11 step to move out of that SOE world and move into the modern migration and modern um, desktop So using tools like Intune to deploy exactly. Windows exactly. and Autopilot to make sure that the whole setup experience is yeah. much easier. And Surface is, is designed and born in that Intune environment. So uh, you know we have specific tools like the Surface Management Portal and things like that yeah. that will... Uh, are specifically designed for our devices to work on that platform. Uh, and we've also got other features that are essentially a benefit to those using modern deployment, um, like um, DFCI, which is essentially... That's technical. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> in a nutshell, it allows you to control all of the settings in the BIOS or the UFI. Uh, with the remote from, management tool? From the remote management tool through through Intune. Right. So you can have your entire estate locked down before it even is really turned so on. we want to disable USB ports on our devices that can be done remotely. Correct. Through yeah. this tool. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Um, what about you, Chris? Anything from a user productivity perspective in Windows 11? Yeah, look, a couple of things for me. And if you sort of watched our sustainability video, one of the things that I pick up on immediately is Windows 11 is actually 20 to 25% are more efficient in terms of power and the power that actually consumes versus Windows 10. So let's drill down on that though. Like how, how can it be more power efficient? What, like how does it do that? Pete, do you want to go into the engineering <laughs> reason behind that? But that's probably, probably deeper on you and how you do it. But I mean, if just on that point for a second, if you do some calculations across a customer that's got 10,000 endpoints, and if you work out that those endpoints are actually going to be 25% more efficient in terms of the power they consume. Yeah, I mean... We, I mean, you do we some quick calculations there. Yeah. That's some pretty significant savings it when is. you talk about power, right? And Pete, if you want to go deeper on how that actually works, that would be great. <laughs> sure. All right. So to nerd out a little bit, um, Windows 11 is actually carbon aware. So it actually knows how much power you're using for certain functions. It allows, it allows you to uh, use things like uh, sleeping of tabs in, in edge, edge yeah. turning on dark mode. People never really understand the amount of power it runs to run those pixels on the on the device in white versus running them in black, which is essentially turning them off. So you're inverting the power use of of that uh, image. Yep. That coupled with smart charging and other efficiency, even the timing of running Windows updates, things like absolutely. that. Absolutely, like yeah. Mentioned. Uh, it, it, so you, when you say it's aware of the grid, like it, it knows when the grid is using a renewable power, for example. Yes, yeah. yeah. So you can... Because that data is available and, yeah. and can be fed in and, you know, let's run Windows updates when we're, you know, using solar power. Exactly, exactly. That's pretty amazing. Um, so that, that's good from a sustainability perspective. Um, like for me, on the end user perspective, there's lots of little details. One that I story that I wanted to tell was uh, of a lady who had her company make a special Windows 11 version of their standard Dell laptop. Uh, they gave her the oldest one from the bottom of the cupboard, poor lady. But um, they gave her that because of voice access, which is a, a feature that's built in. Microsoft, many people will know because I talk about it all the time, they acquired a company called Nuance Communication about four years ago. That was the company that makes Dragon naturally speaking. So it's a voice control system. It's been around forever, been around for 30 or 40 years. Uh, but having that company and their technology for voice recognition has really improved the capabilities of Windows. Mm -hmm. So in Windows 11, we see voice, voice access built in and it's kind of like Dragon, naturally speaking. You can fully remote control your computer, you can move the mouse, you can click on things and you can do all of that with your voice. So this lady had that uh, accessibility need and the only way that she could get that was with Windows 11. Why shouldn't everybody have access to that? Why does that need to be a special thing? Uh, but overall, yeah. I was gonna say 100% and, and what a lot of people kind of miss in that is um, the productivity gain that anyone can have from yeah. those functionalities. So being having a truly mo multimodal device means yeah. that you can interact with it how you work best and uh, get the performance of it you need. So I know from myself uh, when I'm, say, creating a PowerPoint presentation, well, previously, now I get Copilot to do a lot of that work for me, but previously I would dictate quite a lot of the, the content uh, in 
and have that talk track be available and then create the content from that particular hey, let's piece. not forget that you can talk to copilot to do that yeah as well, exactly. right? so, <laughs> so yeah that stuff's going to work better on windows 11 and then for me the other thing is just the little things like um windows snap which was significantly improved in windows 11 we still see that only about 20 to 30 percent of people even know about that feature in windows even though it came out in windows vista in 2007 it's been there for a long time, but it's a good opportunity to, to teach people about that. And it got really good in Windows 11. Not to mention things like um, just opening apps, like when you shut your computer down or reboot it or just put it to sleep and disconnect from the dock, that Windows 11, when you plug back in, it will put the apps back up onto the screen that they were on, right? Those little details, I think, get lost in the, you know, the resources to make this upgrade. We need to make that upgrade for people. And not only that, it's inevitable. Like, there's no way to avoid this upgrade. We're not, you can't see yourself running Windows 10 in 20 years' time. It's not going to happen. Um, nobody's going to make hardware that supports that. So it has to be done sometime. Why not do it before it goes end of life and you yeah. start risking security updates? It, and it is really going to be that 24H2 version is really going to be the new standard code base for everything. So um, those people that are not, transitioning to that or they're going to go oh we're going to go windows 11 but let's say 23 h2 they're going to find themselves having to make that next step because they're going to miss out on the next features and the next features mm -hmm. and one of the big ones that a lot of people don't know about is the uh co-pilot runtime libraries so hang on i, I just want to call that out right because i've had these two microsoft guys here for a couple of hours today for these conversations and i think this is maybe the second time they've mentioned co-pilot that's amazing because uh, normally that's the only thing that Microsoft people want to talk about. Yeah. But yeah, so Copilot, so we've been talking about this, Pete. Like, so the ability to run Copilot potentially on your PC, mm -hmm. why would you want to do that? Like it's there in the cloud. Why do you need to run it on your PC? Hey, you may be in a, in a situation where you don't have the connectivity to do it. Yep. Uh, you may be in the unfortunate situation where you are not a, not a premium user and not using, not, a, not having access to yep. the functions you that you have there. there. So there's, there's the ability, if you have a Copilot Plus PC, there's the ability to use the neural processing unit on that device. Have your own mini run, Copilot. To run your own Copilot. And there's, there's a, a piece of software uh, called LM Studio or Language Model Studio. It allows you to run those language models like Llama, et cetera, on that device. And it's a bit of a cheat at the minute. It's not using the NPU just at the minute today, but it's on the precipice of, of doing that. It will that. be soon. Will Probably be soon. by the time this video gets yeah, out. Yeah, be... yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. So imagine you're offsite, you're in a remote location, and you can discuss and query and talk to a series of documents in a library that you have on your computer and have a natural language you know, exchange back and forth. Tell me the diagnostic steps to fix this fault or this problem, things like that. That's pretty amazing potential capabilities there. Yeah. And um, I think we're probably going to have a session where you go into that a little bit more detail because some really interesting use cases there. But I think for me, if we're counting down, you know, nine months or so till we get to October, I think you know, if I was one of our customers right now, you know, I'd hopefully be on this journey already. But I think it's a really good time to think about a couple of things. Firstly, to think about get away from this SOE re-imaging sort of model of, of Windows and having a gold standard image. We don't do that with our mobile phones. Um, why do we do it with PC still? Now, I know why we did do it yeah. in the first place, but we've moved on from that significantly, right? You always want to be up to date with the latest and greatest, and that's from a security standpoint, but also from an operating system standpoint. So I think the mentality of our customers to think about Windows as being part of your day-to-day -day process and not this big project you have to go through every few years, I think that's a good good start. Yeah. And if you then you think about the same time, it's a really good time to do your modern management uh, approach. So via Intune, think about doing autopilot or at least a hybrid version of, of that type of stuff. I think that really sets you up for a strong future when this becomes, Windows 10 becomes end of support um, in October. Yeah, so look, I think all around, there's definitely a lot of benefits from a usability perspective from you know supporting people to do their best work. Um, security we didn't talk we're going to talk a little bit more about security on the next bit but um from a security perspective that hey the threats that were there 10 years ago are completely different to the ones that, that are there today we have to be ready we can't continue to support that approach from a hardware and a software perspective um and also you know from a technology perspective and what's coming the npu stuff the you know the wi-fi 7 5g connectivity all those things we've got to make this upgrade it's it as i said it's inevitable 
there's no point wasting money on delaying it. Um, but there is a lot of potential benefit to everybody. And and why not take the opportunity to get the productivity increases at yeah. the same time? Yep. So it's there's it's win win yep. essentially. Yeah, for sure. It's a uh, like it's a great opportunity to tell that you know upskill digital skill story and the productivity uh, that you can get from that for sure. And I think just finally, a lot of our customers I'm seeing now are coming off their COVID refresh. You know, going through COVID, there was a big refresh. So I think based on the stats I saw, we're about to hit the biggest year of, of refresh of devices that there, there's been since COVID, right? Yeah. It's that three and four year sort of refresh cycle. Yeah. So what a perfect time to do it. From Microsoft's standpoint with Surface being at the, the tip of the spear, we're going to be focusing on Windows 11 24H2 for our devices moving forward. And we'll talk about that in our Copilot Plus PC section. Yep. But that is going to be the baseline for all these amazing new experiences that are going to come. So I think if you think about that, modern management, the end of support, really that's this this perfect storm of, of reasons why, you know, you should in the next nine months make sure you get into Windows 11. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to worry about that sort of additional support cost post then. For sure. All right, well, thanks, guys. Uh, if you have found this helpful, make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell because we're going to come back and have a couple more discussions with these guys around security and the Surface story around security, but also um, what's a Copilot PC? Why do you need one? Why do you want one? So, uh, yeah, make sure that you join us for that. Thanks for watching. Cool.